Lewin and welcome to Margaret Lewin Quilting. Today we are going to be making this block which is block one of our springtime sampler and I'm very very excited about it. All the kits that are currently available have been delivered and now it's time to show everybody how to put their blocks together. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you how I go about cutting my fabric and we'll start with the first this background color first. So what I've done is I have taken my piece of fabric and I have pressed it. And all I've done is pressed it. The next thing I'm going to do with it, I did put some Mary Ellen's Best Press on it. I do feel like that kind of helps give the fabric a little bit more stiffness. But the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the two salvages See the two salvages? And I'm going to line them up as best I can. Then what I do is I pick the fabric up ahead in front of me. And I'm going to try to show you this, but it's not going to be exactly easy. What I do is I pick it up, keeping my salvages aligned. Then I smooth it out and see what happens. The other thing that I do when you've got it hanging in front of you, look, if your salvages, let's say it lined up like this. Let me hang on just a second. It's a little tricky to show you. But let's say it lined up like this. Can you see that wonkiness down in here? See, it's, it's just not lying up straight. And there are times that you'll bring a piece of fabric home and that will happen. It won't line up straight. And it's not anything that the quilt shop did. And it's not anything really that the manufacturer did to it. It doesn't mean that it's not the same quality. The problem is, is that when it rolled to be folded and rolled onto the bolts, it just got a little bit off grain a little bit. And then it wasn't straight. So if you take that piece of fabric and you concentrate on lining up your salvage, and I'm hoping that you can see, maybe looks like you can see a little bit better what I'm doing. I'm going to take it way off grain so that you can really see how it's not hanging nice and straight. It's got that bubble in it. Let me bring it back to on grain. Okay, we're closer. We're now see how nice it is? Even when I just go to lay it down, the only change in it is my fold over, which is fantastic. And you can see that my salvages are lined right up. So I'm going to take that, I'm going to lay it down on my cutting table, and I'm now going to line my salvage up against the bottom of my cutting board. All right, I'm going to move this a little bit more into camera shot for you. So it's lined up. There is a little bit of an arch right here, but it's, it's pretty lined, and that's what you're looking for. You want that salvage to be lined up as nicely as you can do it, okay? And then I just smooth out my fabric a little bit, just so that I know it's nice and smooth and I don't have any big bumps in it, okay? The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a large ruler. Now I want a ruler that expands from the base of my cutting board to the top of my cutting board. This is my Creative Grids ruler and the size of this one is 24 and a half I think it is by 8 and a half. Yep, by 8 and a half. And this one is fantastic because it reaches the entire height of my cutting board. So I can use some of the lines. See these lines? I can use these lines to help me line up. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to set it down on the fabric. I'm not going to, I'm setting it down on the whole piece so that it just distributes across the fabric. Then I'm going to slide it to my left. You're right on camera. And I'm going to see how far in I have to go to line this up from the bottom 
to the top of my cutting board. And on here, it's showing up at about 14 and a quarter inches, I think. Yep. So I'm going to match it up. Again, see how I picked it up and moved it? Now I'm going to move it back to where it needs to be. I try not to ever push this way to the fabric when I'm cutting it. So I'm going to square up this side just by trimming it off. Now I can start making my cuts. Now on your directions, it gives, and see how I did this again? I picked it up. I stopped before I got to the fabric, picked it up. I put down the top of it against the cutting board, not against the fabric, and then just laid it down. And it just nicely lays right down on top of the fabric. And the fabric's really pretty stable at this point. So in your directions for block number one, it gives you two sizes that we need to cut of this fabric for the block. I'm going to cut my strip to the largest size, and I'm going to be able to get all pieces that I need out of this large strip. So I'm going to take my ruler and I'm again sliding it to my left. It'll be your right on camera. And I'm going to line it up. And where I'm lining it up is all over the place. And I do mean all over. I'm lining it up against the bottom of my cutting board. I'm also lining it up all the way up this left side. I'm right handed. And then again across the top here. And I know it's tough for you to see. See, I'm lined up right there across the top too. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make one cut. And when I make the cut, I'm laying my hand on my cutting board. But what I really do is I use my fingers. Just spread them out. I take my rotary cutter, I come up to where my hands are, and then if I need to move higher, I just walk with my thumb in my fingers. So my fingers were down, I raise my thumb, then I take my fingers higher. All right, I leave my ruler here, and now I'm just gonna fold this up because I believe I only need the one cut to do everything I need to do. Now I'm going to carefully pick this up without moving my fabric around too much. Set my ruler back down. Now I'm going to grab my fabric and I'm just going to carefully rotate it. That's it. Just carefully rotate it and at the same time I'm lining it up against one of my lines on my cutting mat. Now I am going to bring this a little bit farther to the right. My, my right, your left. Because what I want to do next is I want to trim the salvage off. So I've made sure that I'm straight across my top. I'm going to just take my rotary cutter, or I'm sorry, my ruler, picked it up, set it down, and again, just kind of dragging it to the left. I'm going to trim this up. Okay. Lift my ruler and take that piece away because I don't want to lift this fabric again. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate my ruler and lay it down on top of my fabric again. I'm going to go back and double check my measurements and see exactly what I need. And I need five squares of the larger size. So now that I've got my ruler laying like this, I'm going to line this up and then I'm going to take a look at my directions. Now my directions tell me I need five of the larger size blocks. Well, I know I've got two layers, so I can actually do two, four, six. So I know I need three blocks because I'm cutting two layers of fabric. So I'm going to take that number, number on, on your directions that tells you how large to cut it, and I'm going to multiply that times three. And that number is what we need to make our first cut. So I'm going to take my ruler down till I am at that number. And then I'm going to play my lineup game again. This time I'm lining up across here, here, 
here and here. All right. I'm going to make my first cut. Again, you can see my hand is open and I'm just going to go right across here. All right. I'm going to then take my ruler and I'm not going to touch this. I'm just going to slide it down again till I am at my next cut, which would give me two blocks. So take your block size and multiply that times two. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm lining up across the top, across the left side, and across the bottom to make sure I am still square. I'm going to make one cut. Then I'm going to slide my ruler without moving anything all the way down for my third cut. Now you can see I haven't moved the fabric since my first cut, and yet I have cut all, or just about, the larger size pieces of fabric that I need. So there we are. I'm going to take these two, set them up here for you, and then I'm going to take these two, I need five of this size, and I'm just going to set this up there. I'm going to now take this one and I am going to lay my ruler down and I am going to cut my block based on the next smaller size that I need. So I'm lining up my ruler and again I'm lining up here and here because I'm going to cut this away. Put my hand down, one cut two cuts. Leaving my fabric there, I'm just going to pick these two up and move them aside. There's my second cut. Now I know that I need, how many more do I need? I need three more. So I'm going to pick my ruler up. I haven't moved the fabric still. And I'm going to move this so that I can cut the size that I need. Trying to get it lined up here. There we go. All right. So I do need these two. So again, I'm cutting up. Now this time I am going to slide my fabric aside because I don't want to cut it. And then across. Waist. And then I'm going to take these two and set these there. So now I have one piece. I'm going to go over to the ironing board and I'm going to iron it again just in case I've distorted it at all. Then I'll come back and I'll cut my next piece. So I've done that. I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to line it up again to what I need that next cut to be. And now I am going to trim one side. I'm going to move this piece of fabric aside and then across the top. Okay. So now I have cut all of this fabric that I need to make my block. I am going to now cut the other two fabrics and I'll do those off camera. If you really want to see me cut every piece of fabric, you need to leave a comment below. Otherwise, I won't know that you really want to. So I'm going to go off camera for this one. I'm going to get my other two fabrics cut. Then I'll come back and show you what I have to do. All right, I've got all of my squares cut. These are my larger squares. These are my smaller. I'm going to set these smaller squares aside for a little bit because actually I don't need those until I've sewn with these. So I'm going to set those aside. I'm going to put my colored fabric down first and then I'm going to put my vine fabric. That's one way to do it. Then I'll draw a line from one corner to the other and I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch away from the line on both sides of it. The other thing that you can do is you can just take your lighter of the two fabrics, which for this it's this white with the two different greens. I'm going to take my Creative Goods ruler and a friction pen because I'm going to be cutting it. It's not going to show up on the front of the quilt. Just remember that friction pens sometimes do not go away. And um, I learned that the hard way. So while they may um, appear to be gone, they can come back. And um, they also can leave a mark on your fabric on the right side. So if you can, try not to use those to mark 
on anything that's going to remain in your quilt. So I'm going to mark on the wrong side of all of these. You can see I'm just going through, lining up from point to point, and then just taking my pen and drawing a line. And that line is my guide because, remember, you want to sew one quarter of an inch away from both sides. Take my ruler, line it up. Okay. Last one. My very last one. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two pieces of fabric and I'm going to line them up. See how I've lined them up? And I'm going to put a couple pins in them just to hold that fabric together so that when I get it over to my sewing machine, I can just start sewing. And I'm going to do what's called chain piecing them. So I'm going to piece one right after the other. All right, so I have sewn all of them. I'm taking the pins out. And I'm going to cut them apart first. Then I'm going to take them over to my ironing board. I'm going to set my seams. Then after I set my seams, I am going to press them this way so that the salvage goes towards the darker of the two fabrics. Okay, and I'm just going to take my scissors. You can do this with a rotary cutter if you want, but to me it's just faster to grab my scissors and um, cut them. I am going to snip any extra threads here. I don't have many, just a couple. And the reason why I don't have a lot of threads is because I did what's called chain piecing. I just kept sewing one right after the other. So there was never a stop in, a real stop in cutting threads. I just kept stitching, which is a fast way to sew. And when you get up from the machine, all your pieces are together exactly how you sewed them and it just works really nicely. So I'm going to go do that. Once I've done that, I'll come back and we'll work on the next part. All right, so here's all of mine. I'm going to now take a ruler and I am going to take just a couple minutes and I'm going to square all these up. Now, one of the nice ways to square them, I'm going to look and see what size I have to square them to. One of the nice ways to square them up is to actually use the 45 degree line that's on your ruler. If you've got a creative grid, you've got a nice 45 degree line there that you can follow. So I'm going to take it, I'm going to use my ruler, and I am going to just line it right up so that I can square it to what it needs to be. And I'm basically right on, but I want to just clean up my edges. So I'm just going to trim and trim. I'm going to take my finger and just kind of get rid of those little pieces that I trimmed off. I'm going to rotate it, and then I'm going to do that again so that I have lined it right up and I can trim it and my blocks are now going to be square when I go to do the next step. And see, it's just little teeny pieces, but I think it's important that we square it. So I'm going to fast forward you through this and I'm just going to stand here and get these all squared per my directions. All of my blocks sewn. This is fabric one and fabric two for these four. And then I've got six of fabric one in fabric three. So they are all pressed and they are all squared up and we are ready to arrange our blocks. So I'm going to grab these two pieces over here. All right. 
and we are going to flip my instructions over so that we can see exactly how to put Old Maid's Puzzle together. So here is my first block. I'm going to do one row at a time. So there's my first block. Now I need my second block. And then I need my third, which goes just like this. And then my last is just a square. My row two is going to be like this. And then I'm going to need a square. And then I'm going to need another square. And then I'm going to need this one right here. I love this design right here. It's just into simple hourglass, but I really like that design. So my next row, I start with this black. Then I need a green and white. Then I need a color. And then I need, what one's next? This one's next. Okay. Last row, here we go. I need a color. And then I need or a solid, or I need that one. Then I need this one. And then I need this one. There's our black. I think it's perfect. I really like it. I'm very, very pleased with it. All right, so now I'm gonna put it together just like I do a nine patch or any block. I do it in sections. So I'm gonna sew these two together, then these two, then make four. Set that aside. So these two, then these two, then four. These two, then these two, then four. These two, and these two, and then four. Then once I've done that, then I'm going to take it over and I'll take my wool mat with me and I'll just press it. I'll show you what direction I press it in. Then I just have to sew the four rows together. Lickety split. I'll be back in just a minute to show you that. Here is my completed block, and I am thrilled with the way it came out. Very, very pleased with it. Um, it is, I haven't squared it up yet. I'm going to show you that in just a second. I did end up pressing all of the seams open. Oh, I've got one little spot there, except for the half square triangles. And again, I did it because I felt when going through it, that I had too much bulk in places and that I could potentially end up with a bump when I went to quilt it. And I don't want a bump. I want it to lay as flat as I possibly can. So, so here's our block number one. Please leave comments below. Get talking about these blocks and how you're doing with them. If you need me to go into more detail on any aspects of putting this block together, Please do if you want to see me at my sewing machine sewing them. I will do that. Just let me know how much detail it is that you guys want and I will be very willing to do that. What I would also like to see is you guys starting to share your blocks on our Facebook group. Our Facebook group is Margaret Lewin Quilting. It is a fantastic group of people that are extremely friendly and willing to help out, willing to answer questions if any kind of questions come up during the process. But here's block number one. If you haven't already subscribed to this channel, please do so. And if you hit the little bell, you'll get notified every time I upload a video. On Sundays from 2 to 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I do a live with everybody here on YouTube. So make sure you join us then. We have a blast. We talk about everything from quilting to family and back again. You never know what discussion will come up during that time. But thank you so much for being here and I will be seeing you really soon with the next block of Springtime Sampler. The fabric again is designed by Robin Pickens for Moda and the fabric collection is called Painted Meadow. Thanks again, and I'll see you really soon. Bye.